Mm. You attacking players, mm. bringing on defensive midfield players, try to really shore it up as opposed to, to going for the second goal. But obviously that backfired in the end. Yeah, and then the equaliser came in stoppage time. Crystal Palace didn't have a great deal of chances throughout the match, but they made this one count. Underneath it, yeah. which we've seen a lot of time as well. The only thing, and people that watch this show would, would have heard me saying it before, <laughs> and I'll say it again, I don't for the life of me know why teams put their wall on that side of the goal. It's the short way to goal where yeah. he's going. You see De Gea, yeah. as the ball's going, and go for that near corner. And I'm not blaming De Every Every team seems to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. obviously, I'm wrong, but I just can't for the life of me. I've I don't know if you are wrong. Fact, I'm, I'm going to get that out there. It. When you're done, <laughs> I'm going to get out there. <laughs> when you're done with this TV luck, maybe you could go into set I'm sweating now. I'm not <laughs> angry <laughs> about it because it happens all the time. I just don't know why. It's hot in there, mate. It. Don't worry. You're not sweating because you're angry. Oh. It's hot. Well, we, anyway. talk, we talked about the, the chances that Crystal Palace had late on, that Wilfred Zaha one, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But Casemiro has this ridiculously good chance to get a winner for Manchester United. And uh, I'm pretty sure if that was a centre-forward, he'd have that sort of anticipation and, and knock it into an empty net, but just wasn't there. You've missed a few like that, Clemson, haven't you? No. <laughs> no. Absolutely no Sorry. chance. If it was him, he would it was, If it was me, oh, I, no. yeah, no, he even said it. We from were rubbish. We were rubbish. Yeah, from see, two yards out. Two yards out, that was the best. <laughs> 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 I knew I was waiting for that, Jules. What a chance that was. <laughs> like that. If Wolf goes across the defender, Aaron wan has got a problem then and he's in on goal. But when he takes it that way, it's a brilliant tackle. And I thought wan has been outstanding. And credit to him, because he got a lot of stick. Everyone ridiculed him, said he wasn't good enough. Last five games, I think he's been outstanding for Man United. Yeah, he's come in when Dallow's been injured. Dallow picked up an injury during the World Cup, so Aaron wan has been playing probably more than he, he may have expected to. But when you go back to your old club like he did tonight... Does it just give you that little bit of extra that you want to put in an even better performance? I think it does, yeah. And I think when the team sheets came out and Wilfred Zaha saw that that wan was going to be marking him in that game, he would have been thinking, oh, no, because no player wants to play against the likes of wan -Bissaka. His problem, obviously, is on the ball, is going forward. But he's improving that all the time as well. But as Clinton says, that was wan -Bissaka to a T. Mm. That is the best part of his game, that, that late uh, lunging tackle where he almost sweeps his leg around. And uh, and we could see it coming. And Clinton's right. If he takes his first touch across him, he takes wan out the game straight away. He doesn't give him that chance to uh, to make a last-ditch tackle. But he played well. And, uh, and in fact, Zaha, after only... Well, he was during the first yeah. half, he switched sides. Yeah. He was getting no joy out of him. And not many wingers do get no joy out of a wan But as I say... From Manchester United's point of view, you need your full-backs to be brilliant at the back, but yeah. going forward as well. And that's slightly where he lacks. We saw a moment ago that the opportunity that Casemiro had to win the game for Manchester United in the end. Scoring goals isn't the main part of his game. Being in that midfield, he has been absolutely crucial to everything Manchester United have done well, particularly since the, the return after the World Cup. He picks up a booking, yeah. and I think... All Arsenal fans around the world will have been jumping for joy because it means he misses the game against Arsenal at the weekend. But Man United fans will be thinking, why? This guy thinking maybe I should have took him off early, but you can't take him off early. The game's 1 0, still in the knife edge there. You can't take him off. So I think he's just got to be more sensible next time he makes that tackle. You can see the reaction from Eric Ten Hag. You can see the reaction from Casemiro, who knows exactly what it means. And I think Bruno Fernandes is one of the first players to go over to him after that as well. And you can see them almost having a conversation <laughs> yeah. about it. Um, how much of a loss will he be in that Arsenal game? Yeah, massive loss. I mean, you get away without Casemiro in, in certain games. If they were playing at home to somebody next, you know, a team outside the top four or five, then, you know, it's, it's not so bad. But when you play against the big boys, when you play against the best teams, you have to have absolutely everybody, all your best players, fit and ready to go. And that is a massive blow. They all knew it. He shrugged his shoulders as if to say, I couldn't do anything, but he could have. I think Clinton's right. He could have. I don't think it was... You know, Varane was behind him. It wasn't an absolute last-ditch uh, challenge. Uh, and Ten Hag, you saw his reaction as well. So, yeah, that's that's one of the... I mean, it was a bit of... Blow. That, that last ten minutes was a nightmare for them. Yeah. They lose one of the best players for a big game and they concede a goal, lose two points. Um, and Clinton's right, you can't bring him off. What, at 1-0, it goes to show they went and equalised. You just... You can't risk bringing them off. So, yeah... A disaster 10 minutes for Manchester United.